Hi, my name's Alan Smith, and welcome to part three in the series of webcasts looking at GPT versus StarCraft II. In this webcast, we'll look at how we can use a StarCraft bot that retrieves the current game state, makes a call to the GPT model to retrieve the strategy, and then acts on that strategy during the game. So in Visual Studio, I'm going to add a new Python module called Play Protoss GPT Bot. We can see in the bot test example that this code works by creating a class named Worker Rush Bot, and this class derives from Bot AI. And in the onStep method, if the iteration count is equal to zero, then we just take all of the workers and tell them to attack the enemy base. I'm going to be using a class to implement the functionality of the bot, but I'll be placing this class in a separate file. So let's create a project folder named bots. And in this folder, I can add a Python module named StarCraft GPT bots, and I'm going to copy paste the code that I built when I was experimenting with this scenario. I'll run through this code in a lot more detail in another webcast, but for now, let's just look at the high level structure. So the class is called Protoss GPT bot. It's going to be a bot that's specific to playing Protoss. And I'm defining member variables for the build order, which is going to be an array. Build order ID will be a pointer to the current item on the build order. And then I've got a rally point, which is going to be where the offensive units are going to gather when they're defending the enemy base. I'm setting the default game strategy to defend your base. I've got another couple of variables, build order structures built and build iteration delay. And I'm using these for a bit of micromanagement in the game. So the onStart method, we're going to set the rally point. And here I've written some code to just set the rally point a bit closer to the centre of the map than the actual start location. We'll see this in action when the bot starts playing the game. So if we scroll down, we get to the onStep method. This is going to be executed very frequently for every step in the game. The base class, botAI, provides a method called distributeWorkers, which has a bit of code which will send the workers to gather minerals. However, we don't need to do this on every game step, so I'm saying if iteration modulo 10 is equal to zero, then we're going to distribute the workers, and it will run on every 10 iterations. The next thing we need to do is to make a call to GPT to get the strategy. So here, I'm checking if the build order ID, the pointer to the build order, is equal to the length of the build order. And if it is, we've reached the end of the build order. Now when I start the game, build order will be empty. So build order ID is zero, and the length of the build order will be zero. So we'll make a call for the strategy. And we should hopefully get 20 items. So we're going to work through those items. And when we've exhausted the items, we'll call GPT for another strategy. We then need to make the main decision. Are we going to attack the enemy base or are we going to defend the base? And this is based on the setting for game strategy. The next step is to process the next item on the build order. You can see here that it's working with a build iteration delay. And this is because if we get one unit that's dependent on another unit, sometimes the first unit hasn't been created when we're asked to build the second unit. So delaying a few iterations will help to solve these issues. So here's the method to call a GPT for the strategy. The first thing we're going to do is to get the current game state. Get game state description is going to iterate through the units and structures, then it will generate the game statistics text. And this is similar to what I was using when I was testing the prompts. So we specify the game time, the supply cap, the amount of minerals, and then we iterate through the units and structures. And once the game state's been generated, we can then return it. So I'll print the game state to the console, generate my instance of the language model, and you can see that I'm using GPT-4 with a temperature of zero. For working with prompts, this is the same code I was using when I was testing the prompt. We load the prompt from the text file, set the prompt variables, and then make the call to the language model. We can then output the response in the console, then we can pass the response, generating the build order list and the game strategy. So for each line, if the line starts with strategy, then I'll set the game strategy to the contents of that line. Otherwise, if the line length is greater than three and it doesn't start with summary, then we're going to append that line to the build order. Sometimes it will list the build order with one dot build probe, two dot build zealot, and sometimes it will just list the text. 
So here I'm just detecting a dot, and if the line starts with a number and a dot, then we remove that, and only add the text instruction from the build order. If the strategy is to attack the enemy base, I'm printing out attack quite a few times in the console. Sometimes we wait a long time for the attack to take place. This helps us to see in the console when we're going to be attacking the enemy base. So I've implemented some code for training units and building structures, and also some micromanagement code for defending and attacking the base. I'll also run through the implementation of the bot in another webcast when I'm making changes and implementations to add more units and add more structures to the building list. In the Play Protoss GPT bot, I'll copy paste the code to run the bot. This is fairly similar to the bot test code. I'm importing the relevant libraries, specifying the map name and the player race. I'm calling load.env so that the open API settings will be loaded. And then I create a new instance of the Protoss GPT bot and run the game. I'm going to be testing this with the computer playing Ray Sturg, and the difficulty of the computer AI will be very easy. You can see that I've got all of the other options commented in. And as I go through this series of webcasts, we'll see how far down the list we can work and still be able to consistently win the game with the bot's implementation. So for the initial test, I'm going to set real time to true. So let's start the application and see how well GPT-4 performs. OK, you can see that the workers are now gathering resources. And here we can see that the resource count is increasing. The supply cap is 13 out of 15, so we're fairly close to the supply cap. We can see that the first option in the list is to build a pylon. So one of the workers will go and create that pylon. The resource cap is currently 13 out of 15. And when that pylon's created, you can see that the supply cap's gone up to 23. Steps two, three, four, and five are to build probes. And these probes are going to be created in that pyramid shaped building, which is known as a nexus. And you can see the blue bar on top of the nexus shows when these probes are being trained. So step six is to build a gateway. And this is going to be the structure that we're going to use to train the zealots, which are attacking units that we can use to defend our base and hopefully attack the enemy base. So I'll speed up the gameplay so we can get through the first set of build options. OK, so we built all of those successfully. We're now getting the current game state, making the call to GPT-4, and getting the next set of build options. You can see it did specify options at the top. However, the bot doesn't know what that is, so it skips that option. We can also go into the console and see what the actual summary is. The strategy is still to defend the base, and the summary of the strategy is that given the current game state, it's crucial to focus on resource gathering and base defence. With a high number of probes and a decent amount of minerals, it is advisable to build more pylons to increase the supply cap and allow for more units. Building zealots will provide a basic defence against an early zerg aggression. It is also important to start collecting Vespain gas for more units and upgrades, so building an assimilator should be a priority when possible. However, uh, at this point, we haven't given it the option to build an assimilator, and I'll be looking at doing that implementation in another webcast. I'll speed up the gameplay again until we get to the end of that build list. So this point in the map is the rally point that I've defined in the code. And this is where the offensive units are going to gather. Here we can see that they're moving. The Zerg opponent has sent this little creature in to investigate our base. So our offensive units are going to chase it off. You can see its health is decreasing, but unfortunately the little critters are a bit faster than our zealots, so it manages to get away. Once it's done that, our offensive units will return to defend the base. OK, so we reached the end of that build list. We're 4 minutes 15 seconds into the game. You can see we've got a supply cap of 103, but the supplies used are only 38. It's seeming like GPT is building too many pylons here. For one thing, this is wasteful. And for another, they take up quite a lot of space in the map. And that can limit other units and structures from being created. We've got quite a lot of minerals. We've got three gateways, which is good. That means I can produce lots of zealots fairly quickly. We've got 24 probes and nine zealots. And looking at the build order, specifying us to build three probes, then a pylon, a zealot, a gateway, a couple more probes, a pylon, Zealot, couple more probes, but it's still building more pylons than we need. So let's drop back to the game. 
Here we can see the number of army units. We've got 15 of those and they're all zealots. So here, six minutes into the game, it's making another call to GPT. We can see the game strategy here. And if we scroll up a bit, we can still see that it's choosing to defend the base. OK, so let's return to the game and see how it's progressing. So we seem to be in a bit of a stalemate here. It's built probes all around the Nexus building. And this is meaning that the workers are unable to gather resources. And without any more resources, we can't build any more zealots. So I think I'm going to have to abandon this game. OK, so back to the prompt. Normally in StarCraft, we'll train many different types of units before we make an attack. So here, in the prompt, I'm going to explicitly specify, as you can only attack with zealots, you must focus on building zealots and attacking the enemy base early in the game. And hopefully that will have some influence on the strategy. So I'm going to try testing the bot with this new prompt. This time I've set real time to false. And when real time is set to false, the game will pause whilst I'm making the call to GPT-4 to retrieve the game strategy. And once we get the strategy, you can see that it's running through that strategy fairly quickly. We've built a probe. We've built a gateway. And we've trained our first zealot. You can see the game's pausing now because we're making another strategy update. And then we're back into the game. You can see we're building the second gateway. And the number of zealots seems to be increasing quite rapidly. We're already four minutes into the game now. You can see we've got nine zealots and we've decided to attack the enemy base. So let's follow the zealots across the map. They're storming the enemy base. They're making fairly easy work of this. And we can see that the computer wishes to surrender. So let's accept that surrender and we've got a local player victory. OK, this is a very easy level, but it seems like GPT-4 is able to make some intelligent choices about the StarCraft game strategy. However, we're still a long way from being able to beat it on the more advanced levels. So we made a bit of progress in this webcast. In the next webcast, we're going to look at monitoring the statistics of the game using TensorBoard and also prompt engineering, where I'll be making changes to the prompt to improve the strategy recommendations that are returned by GPT-4. So hit subscribe if you want to be notified of new webcasts.